how the week has been, what course you're still on, and your experience so far. So while we're waiting on that, um, I'll just you know share briefly what we intend to achieve with this class. Um, we've had uh, we've had a bit of you know um, how do I call it now back and forth with um, some participants you know struggling with some content, struggling with understanding some concepts. So. We're hoping to um, provide some clarity with this live session. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a Q&A. OK, not a bit of a Q&A, a, a lot of a Q&A. Um, we want to know what your struggles are and see how we can um, provide some help on this call. And also, we want to have like a live coding session. OK, it's not going to be on any of the um, projects that we have, something a little more, should I say a little more complex? Uh, hopefully it's not too complex, you know, on the call, but yeah, those are the two main things that we intend to get, get into. Okay, I can see week four, week four. Oh, wow. Wow. I can see it's, um, a number of people are still on week four. Okay. <laughs> it has been very challenging. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 co the content of the training for front end, not just front end, I'm sure for all the other courses too, has been set up in such a way that um, for every week, we keep stretching. Um, our knowledge base and we keep stretching our abilities so we're trying new things so it will stretch you uh but it's it's a good kind of stretch i believe so uh i, I think i i got a feedback from someone earlier today and the person was talking about how after a while it starts to become more fun right and i think that happens um as you get more familiar with html and css you have those uh, moments where you are really enjoying what you're doing you know you're changing stuff um you're adding styling and it's like you're performing magic it's like you're merlin or harry potter you're doing stuff and all of this stuff on your page is practically obeying your command and it's fun you know but uh, there are also the times when you're also trying to figure out stuff, but you're not quite getting it. Those times can be very frustrating. So those are like, it's it's like a cycle. Uh, it's like a cycle that happens almost every time. So don't, don't feel some type of way when you experience either one, you know, just, just uh, get used to it. Hopefully it gets easier as you as you build up your knowledge base some more all right uh you're definitely trying to evolve, evolve to the code with that yeah we all are we all are okay Uh, hi, Tina. We're trying our best to be more hands-on. Um, welcome feedback. If you have any feedback, you can always send to any of us. We'll take a look at it and see how best we can implement going forward. All right. I'm just going to give like one or two more minutes to see if any other person is going to join us, and then we can get into the nitty-gritty of the class.
Okay, so um, in that one or two minutes, I'm just going to quickly, um, let me see. I'm just going to um, create a post on the Slack channel um, where we can drop our questions. Um, if you're having issues with understanding certain concepts, you're having issues with whatever questions you have, right? Okay, someone is saying they're not understanding the semantic tags. I uh, will try to touch on that in, on this call. What, um, I'm going to create that that post now on the Slack channel, and then you can just drop your questions in there. Um, it will help so that we have like a dedicated um, a dedicated thread for those questions, so it's easier to pick rather than having them on the chat here, since everybody is going to be typing as we go along. So all questions um, should go on that thread, and we'll try to get to them one after the other. So just give me a minute, let me set up that post. All right, so I just dropped that. Please confirm if you can see that post. Um, I would like for us to answer, um, drop our questions in a thread so that we don't, um, so it's easier to call it, so we can just reply to that post with our questions. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, since a lot of people are, saying that you know they are still on week four i think i would want to um do a little bit of exp explanation you know starting with um semantic tags and whatnot um just do a little you know overview of that and hopefully this would provide some clarity to those who are still having issues with working with semantic tags. All right, let me just share my screen. Okay, can we see my screen now? Please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can, Jimmy. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, um, starting up with semantic tag, um, semantic markup, rather not semantic tags, please. Semantic markup. Um, the concept of semantic markup. It's not like we have um, tags that are semantic tags in that sense. Okay. It's a concept of um, using tags that make that have meaning right and um, their meaning is relevant to where you're using them okay um let me just do this 
So rather than having a lot of um, divs on your page and then someone looks at your page and all they are saying is not really making so much sense to them in that, you know, a person can look at your um person can look at your web page or your html markup and they have a sense of what's on that page and where everything is okay let me just do this uh, sorry give me a minute okay so like i was saying rather than just having um I'm just going to quickly type up an example that I would work with. Okay, so if I was working on a web page, right, I could start with stuff like this, and then I just keep having divs you know, inside of these and inside of divs. And anyone who takes a look at this um, markup, this HTML page, they keep seeing divs and divs. And then for them to understand um, how the sections of my web page are, you know, how it is outlined, they need to take a really deeper look into the page and then start looking, you know, okay, where's the footer part? Where's the main bit? Where's this section and all that? Meanwhile, um, HTML has already provided certain tags that have meaning. So you have tags like um, a header tag. When you see a header tag, it, it tells you that, okay, the content of this tag is a header, right? Is the header bit of your page. You have something like a navigation tag um, or nav. All right, you can see this um, small pop-up that just came up here. The nav element represents a section of a page that links to other pages also parts within the page, a section with navigation links. So this is what I mean. This is um, what we mean when we talk about um, tags having meaning, okay? The tags have a meaning. If I just put, if I had just put um, a div tag in here this way, you would not know it was, or you would not know that it is a navigation tag unless you start trying to trace or oh, what is inside of it, where is it showing up on the web page and all that. Meanwhile, if you have this here, taking a look at it already tells you by default that this is a navigation um, link. It's where your navigation on the page goes into, okay? You have tags like your main tag, um, which you use for the main contents. Okay, so usually on your web page, usually not all the time, usually you have your header at the top, you have your footer at the bottom, and then you have your main tag in between. The main tag is the body, the main body of your web page. You have a tag like section, right? You you use section to like um to group together parts of your page that are alike. If I may use that word, let me show you an example. Uh, um, okay, so this is um, frontend mentor.io. The site provides challenges that um, you can go through. Um, you can work with those challenges. The, the site does that. So this is just a web page or a design that I picked from that site. Now, if you look at this design, I can group um, the components of this design by how the each element, there's there's a way, there's a sort of grouping that they have. All right, if I look at this, you can see that this part of the, um, this part here up until this button, it seems grouped together, right? And then if I scroll down a bit, you can see that from here up until here, seems like it's grouped together too. The text is together. And then you have a bit of space. And then you have this one that is also grouped together here. You have the um, header here. You have a bit of text here. You have an image. They are grouped together too like that. And then like that, like that. So when you see designs like that, you can group the elements together. And you can um, put that grouping into what you call a section. 
okay so if i was going to execute or implement this web page i know that i can have all of this here in a section tag and then i start picking out each element and adding it to the page i can do the same thing for this part okay so grouping grouping them together like that makes styling easier all right if i just if i were to just um come to this section here and then i just keep adding oh this tag is a heading tag, maybe an H1, and then a P tag, and then this, this, this. By the time I want to group it together to have this look, it becomes harder, okay? That's why you need to group them together under one tag. Once you have them under one tag, styling becomes easier. And the tag that works for that is a section tag. So you, it's, it's like you're dividing your web page into sections, okay, that work for you. Um, it depends on the design you're working on or the page you're trying to implement. Your main tag can have as many sections as you want. Okay. A tag like um, a P tag is another one that has meaning. It's um, it's your paragraph tag. So once you see a P tag, you know, like contains text. It's like a paragraph. It is a paragraph. You have um, article tag. Uh, so if you have like a group of text together, Something similar to how your um, newspaper would read. You know, you have articles within your newspaper. So if you have text like that, that is groups, a, a group of text, you could use your article tag to group it all together and then se um, separate each one into maybe your P tag. If you have links in there, you could separate, you know, have all of that within your article tag. All right. Uh, this is clear. I hope that I'm not confusing anyone does that make sense please let me know if what i've said now um you know makes yes. sense or if, if there's any bit of confusion all right so pretty much what um that's what semantic markup is that's what writing semantic markup is it's it's not a it's not a complex concept. It's just simply using the right tag in the right place. Okay. And if you look at the um, assignment or the the yeah, assignments that we had in that section, uh, let me select that. Uh, is it this one now? Okay, yes. If you take a look at that asset, um, that assessment in that section. We have this first snippet of code here. It has a heading, it uses the H1 tag. So um, we have we have a set of tags in HTML that are used for headings. It starts from H1 all the way to H6. So you have H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. H1 is the most prominent um, of all of them. For example, if I come on this page that I have here, if you look at this page, this here seems this um, a history of everything you copy looks like the most prominent heading on this page. So typically, I would make it um, I would use an H1 tag for that because it's it's the it's the loudest heading you have on your page. Okay, it's the one that calls the most attention right and then you have h2 which is next in line to that so you have h3 h4 h5 all the way to h6 okay so here you have my heading you have a um an h1 tag here that seems fine you have a p tag p tag um ordered list and then you have your list items inside of it that seems fine so this code snippet here is semantic because if i take a look at it i have an idea of what's happening I know that this is a list here. I know that this is a heading. This is a paragraph. This is a paragraph. This is another list here. Um, this is another heading here, right? It's not quite as prominent as H1, but it's a heading here. It's a subheading. And then there's a paragraph. There's another subheading and a final paragraph. Now, unlike that first snippet of code, this second snippet of code here uses divs all through. Even though it says its content here says click me, and then this is this is from the first button, okay? So when you see something that says "click me," right? It's the, the idea of a "click me" is like a button that you click on to do something, okay? Like um, you have your um, 
login page for your Facebook account or something, your login page or your sign up page. After you've entered all your information, there's always that button at the bottom that you have to click on maybe to submit your information or to get something done, right? So that's what a click me sounds like. It sounds like a button. So you know that, oh, should it be a div? And then this is, this is from the first button. So it tells you it's a button. So if it's a button, a div is not semantic markup in this case. All right, so it's, 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 uh, this is what this assessment is saying. Just take a look at it. Is it semantic? Does it tell you what is happening on the page? If it doesn't, what tag? should you use instead okay um yeah so so that's that's pretty much the um basics of or that's pretty much the concept of semantic markup now for you to um be able to work really well with semantic markup for you to make your web pages really semantic um when you're writing your code I think it's important that you have quite a bit of knowledge of the tags that are available, right, into um, in HTML, okay? Because if you don't know that something exists, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know where you can use it or if you should use it. So you need to um, get a bit more familiar with HTML tags, okay? Uh, it's impossible to uh, memorize all of them, of course. I mean that that that's quite impossible. There's so many things that you know you're going to use over the course of your career as a front-end developer, and you cannot memorize all of them. But the more you um, work with them, some become more familiar to you that you know you have them right on your at your fingertips, right? So it's um, important that we uh, get familiar with reading up um, documentation on you know HTML tags like. You have that um, documentation readily available so you can go over and you can have an understanding or at least a knowledge of what's available, the tags that are available for you to use, okay? Uh, so that, yeah, it, it, it helps your knowledge base. Um, I want to quickly take a look at some of the questions that we have already on that thread. Okay, so someone said, can we dive more into semantic markup? I think I just did that. Um, if there is time, can we do a live coding of a one-page website that we implement to week four lessons? Yeah, if there's time, we're going to do a live coding session that would implement all of the lessons that we have learned. Um, Okay, so I'll take the other questions as we go along. Um, they are they are not on this. Okay, so I hope that with this, um, I've been able to you know shed some light on this uh, concept, the concept of semantic markups, and it will help those who are still stuck on this assessment so they can you know use this knowledge to move forward um css selectors css selectors i don't think that's i don't think i've seen anybody um talk about that on the channel so i think that's fine let's just be going to uh the week five content let me see Okay, um, I think I'll just I'll just get into the um, live coding session. If you have any questions, you can just keep dropping them, and I'll get to them as we continue. So I'm going to try to code this page, um, this design rather. I'm going to try to implement this design on this call so that we can see how um, what my process is like. Uh, touch on a few best practices that I think we should learn or know.
okay? So I'll get right into it. Um, to make things easier, I already uploaded all of the um, assets and the images on a Google Drive folder, in a Google Drive folder, sorry. And then I also um, uploaded the images um, to another site so that I can just use links um, to display those images. I'll share, I'll show you what I mean by that in a bit. So this is what I'm going with, right. All right, so getting started with this, um, I want to explain a concept in um, front-end development called mobile-first development. Uh, there's mobile-first and there's desktop-first. What that simply means is that um, when you are implementing your web page, you can choose to start from the mobile view first and then make um, necessary styling changes for bigger screens. Or you can choose to implement from a bigger screen first and then make um, changes for smaller screens. Okay, uh, I think those who have taken the, those who have started on the week, week five course would understand this a bit more, but it's it's something that the um, those in week four can also like understand. It's, okay, so um, let me show this. Now this is that same site right but this is like a mobile design this is like a mobile view so what this is saying is that if um, by the time i'm done implementing this site and it goes live if someone is viewing that site on their mobile phone right or on any device that is um not more than let's say 375 pixels in width right this is what this site should look like Okay, and if you look at this, you know that it's quite different from um, what this looks like. Uh, the the texts are pretty much put together. All these images that you have on the side, they are centered. You know, all these um, logos here are centered. Everything is just more centered and more, um, yeah, more centered. I don't think there's anything hidden on this page. Uh, that's something that happens so when you're when you're creating a site and then you're making it work for mobile and um, desktop screens sometimes you want to hide certain things maybe um if you have a head for instance i don't know I, I don't know if most of us have experienced it but you could be working on a site on your mobile phone and then you see this little um horizontal lines, they're usually about three, you know, they're called hamburgers. And then you click on the hamburger and a, a menu slides out, either from your left or from the top. And then you're able to make selections. On desktop screens, you usually don't use that. It's just going to be like a header with your navigation links at the top. So sometimes you want to hide things like that, right? On your mobile screen, all of that. Yeah, it's part of what what is, um covered in responsiveness you know you're trying to make your your, your web page responsive for mobile and um, desktop okay so i'll get into this page this page does not have a header with navigation links right it just has a section here with this image um it has a background image behind it this section has a background image showing up there and then i have this header text this um paragraph and then I have two buttons here. Okay. And all right, let's let's get started. I just up my VS code. Uh, let me see. Okay, someone said where do I get my assets? Um the assets are from the site where I got um the design is from this site frontend mentor.io so they provide challenges that you can work on and then they provide you with um, the assets that you need to work on those challenges. So if you, uh, let me just open up that site so you have an idea of what it looks like. So you have challenges here from um, beginner to pro. 
or to guru, like they say. And then you can just pick a challenge. Some of them are premium, so you have to pay for those. Some of them are free. So you just pick a challenge from here and um, they give you a link to download the assets. So you can work with them. Okay, any other questions? Are any of the challenges, are they interactive, like uh, utilizing JavaScript as well? Yes, yes. So there are some that have, um, you see this one here, they tell you what you need to use. So this is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, this is HTML, CSS, CSS, HTML. So it, it, it goes from beginner to advanced. Uh, let me sort here easier first. So it goes from beginner to advanced. Um, so the the uh, the easiest ones um, have just HTML, CSS. This has HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You see the tag here that says um, newbie. So that's like for beginner level. And then it just goes on intermediate and diffi the difficulty gets um, keeps increasing. This is a guru level, so <laughs> yeah, that's that. Okay, so for this um, page I want to work on, I'm going to start, I'm going to do a mobile first, meaning that I'm going to style my page to look like this by default. Default, and then I start adding um, specific styling for desktop screens. Okay, the other way, like I mentioned, desktop um, first would have been to where's that? Okay, here. So now the page to look like this first, and then start um, adding styling to make it look this way. Okay. But usually, um, I think mobile first is um, usually, should I say simpler? Um, I was listening to a, 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 I was watching a video earlier and I was talking about how um, usually your mobile designs are usually simpler because most times you have everything just stacked on top of each other, okay? Like there's only so much that the screen can take because of the width. So most times they are just um, stacked on top of each other like that. It is when you get to the um, desktop size that things start, um, designers start experimenting, doing a lot of things like this that you have to implement. So it gets, it gets um, more complex as the screen size increases. So mobile first is a nice way to go to get started. All right, so I'll use the same HTML page. I'll just take all of this out. Uh, I've mentioned in previous videos that I usually like to start off with my HTML first. Like have all of the HTML for the page and then I'll just start styling from the top all the way down. So I'm having um, just a main tag and a footer tag here because this page does not have a header, okay? There's just this section here at the top and then there's the footer at the bottom. All of this here is the footer. And then in between all of that is the main, um, the main body. So I'm just, uh, let me see how many sections I want to divide this into. This is one, two. Okay, I'll this together, that's two. Then I have three, then I have four, five, six. I'll say about six sections, just to make um, styling easier for me. Let's see. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so six sections. So within my main um, tag here, I just have like 
the six sections. I'm just going to copy and paste so I don't have to type. Let's see. Four, five, six. All right, so that's okay. <clears throat> Uh, okay, let me just minimize this. Please let me know if you can see my um, VS Code screen. Can you see what I'm typing? Or if I need to zoom in a bit? I can see. I can see. Okay. 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 So, no updates just yet. All right. Um, so, within that top section, I have an image. Uh, I'm using the image that they provided. So I have this. I'll provide my alt. Okay, below that, I have an H1 tag. That says the history of everything you copy. Right? Let me just move this to the side. Okay, and then I have a P tag. Oh, let's see. What else? Oh, okay. This is let me just use this one. Yeah, this is Clara. And just to minimize this. Okay. Awesome. So uh, below that, I have two um, buttons, right? But let me just check here. Okay, so they are side, side, so I will just put that into a div. That makes, I mean, styling easier, in my opinion. I'll just do that button one. Okay, so that first section is done. And then I'll move into the second section. Now this um, this heading here is in my eyes, right? It looks slightly less uh, in font size than this one. Am I wrong or am I right? Yeah, it is slightly less. So I would use an H2 right there. Uh, so I'm going to just mention that it's it's nice to have um, your code, your tags nested in each other when you're typing. I've seen some code where um, you have nested tags, but all of them are like on the same line. It makes reading your code a bit, a bit more difficult. So uh, please keep in mind, once you're, once you're nesting one tag inside of another, there should be that um, spacing. You can use your tab 
or you can use your space bar, maybe like two spaces or four, you know, to just leave that, um, give that nested look so that by looking at your code, at a, um, taking a glance at your code, we have an idea of what is where, right? Okay. Okay, that's the end of that paragraph tag. And below that, I would add an image tag for the next image. Uh, and alt and SRC attributes. All right, and then after that, uh, this set of um, text. So this also has a header and the head, a heading, sorry. Um, there's a difference between a header, a header tag, a heading tag, and a head tag. Please don't mistake them for each other. Okay, so this heading here looks um, slightly smaller than this too. So I'll just go another step down. Uh, but before I do that, I will just do article tag, right? Because this looks like um, one at one. Should, so, so there are two ways I could go about this, right? I could put all of this into one article with three headings or three articles, each with their own heading and text, okay? Um, either way works. Pretty much. Let me just put all of them inside one article, one article tag, and then each of them inside their own div tag. So I'll give this an H3. So like I said, for ease of um, styling, right? All right, um, I think it's a bit easier. But guys. Oh boy. Okay. Um. And then I'll just do this again.
Okay, so that section is done, and then I can move to the next section. Uh, the H2 tag. Okay, and um, below that I'll have my uh, image SRC attributes and alt text attributes. Right now, I could also um, choose to put these two tags inside of one article tag. Uh, because if you notice, there's like this bit of space between um, this paragraph and the image here that is, is different from what you have here. So it's not like each element has the same space in between them. It's like this is grouped together and then there's a bit of space between that grouping and this. So that's one um, other way I could do it. But really, you can pretty much... Um, group and style, you know, how how um, you, you think work best for you. One other way I could learn it is simply left it, um, left them separate like that, and then style them separately, add the amount of, the proper amount of space here for this one and all that, but groupings just make it easier. So I'll just choose to group that and move to the next. Okay, so I'm done with that session, that section. And I can move to this one. Let's do the same article here. H2, supercharge your workflow. Now, within that same section, I have this um, set of contents that has uh, one image at the top, one heading beneath that, and some text. So there's the image or icon, the heading here, and the text. So this heading is also um, a step lower than this. So I'll just use an H3 for that. And of course, I would um, group them together. This, I'll take this together and then the other ones. So let's just say div. Uh, let me see what it looks like on the big screen. Okay, so if you notice on the big screen here, they are all um, together on one line, right? So I could choose to group them together this way first and then group each individual one, okay? So the, the grouping together is what I would use to style it to either stay um, vertically or horizontally. Um, grouping them together on, on inside of one tag will make that easier, okay, than having to uh, manipulate them if they were not grouped, grouped together. So I can use a D for that, or um, I don't want to use a section inside of a section, so I would use a D for that. 
and then I'll use another div for each of them. So first is the image again, the SRC attributes, the alt attributes, and then close that off. And then I have my H3 inside of that. Sorry. Yeah, this is easier to see again. Uh, create blacklist. And then inside of that, I have a P tag again. Okay. Ensure. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this again two more times. So I'll just copy that. And then I can just set the text. Uh, plain text. Okay, and then the next one. Okay, so that section is done. And then I can move to the next section that has these images. Um, from what I have here, I'm choosing to put it into its own section. So there are about five images there. All right. So I'll just... I can just copy this image. Okay, and all right, my last section just before the footer. Uh, let me come here. Okay, so that's also an H2. Okay, and then we have this um, button here. They are quite similar to what we had in the first section um, in terms of look and everything. So I could simply just copy that and I mean, I need to type it all, of, all over again since I already have it. So I'll just put that in here. Okay, and that section is done. Uh, don't forget, like I said, um, use, you know, the markup, um, use markup that works for you, the way you see it and you think 
um, it will work. I could have also put this into an article, an article tag, but I'm choosing not to. Uh, when I start styling, I might change that decision. I'm not sure yet, but for now, I'm choosing to leave it as is. Okay. All right. So in the footer here, I have that image as well. Uh, search C attributes alt. And then I have this um, set of texts and then this set of fonts. So I'm going to group each of them, right? Uh, they are not exactly sections of their own. If you look at, if you come here, everything here goes um, horizontal. So I wouldn't call them sections of their own. So I can just use um, a div, right? A div tag works for grouping them in this case. I can just do that. Uh, they are supposed to be clickable links. So I would use anchor tags, not um, paragraph tags. Hi, yes, I muted myself. I, I'm, I'm muted myself. I wasn't saying anything. I was just typing. So I'm just going to go through um, the chats now to see if I missed any questions. Um, hold on.
Okay, so someone says, what is the benefit of using article tag here? Um, I would still have grouped those um, tags together. And instead of just using a div tag, I decided to use article tag because that seems to uh, make more sense. You know, it has more meaning than simply using a div in that particular place. Okay. Um, tags don't add styling by default, right? You add styling to the tag. So it's not going to center the text until I center the text. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see what other yes it was chosen for semantic purposes that's why i used the article tag in there uh, at the point where i was muted i wasn't saying anything but i had some background noises so i had to uh, mute so that that wouldn't affect um the class Okay, so I'll just um, go over that code again. I'll go full screen here. And here we go from the beginning. Um, I mentioned we didn't have a header tag. So we didn't have a header rather on that design. So there was no need for a header tag. Um, I just moved into the main tag and then I divided um, the content of the main tag into about six sections, you know, the way I thought that the code was grouped together, all right? Um, someone else will probably group them in a different way. That's fine, as long as you're able to achieve um, the same results. But I chose to group into six different sections. And within each of those sections, I had, um, yeah, the content, I simply put in the content section by section. Okay, uh, here where I have these images, that's where you have those um, links, Google, um, sorry, not links now, icons slash logos. Um, you had Google, you had IBM and about three others. I don't remember them now. So that's, that's what's going to come in here. Um, yeah. And I mentioned that at the footer, because it's expected that these links are clickable, um, that those listed um, texts, now we expect that they are clickable. You want someone to be able to click on this and then go to your FAQs. That's why I used um, the anchor tag here. And then the final social media um, images, um, you could use icons, but I decided not to use icons since the images are provided in the assets um, that come with um, that come from the website I use, that's that's front end mental that I so I just decided to go with using images instead. Okay. Uh, there's a difference between aside and article tag. Yes, there is a difference. Uh, someone already mentioned aside is usually used for like um, if you have like sidebars on your um, desktop screen, right? Aside works well for sidebars like that. Article is, your, if you have text that is grouped together, like I mentioned in something like, something as similar to if you're reading um, an article, imagine you're reading an article, right, in your local newspaper, okay? The article is composed of different um, headings, subheadings and paragraphs usually. Sometimes you have images in between. So when you have a, um, a body of text like that, right, made up of different um, mini components inside of that, that an article tag pretty much works for that, okay? All right, uh, is there any other question I might have missed? Okay, I think that's it. So I would get into um styling and some of the best practices for styling 
Uh, okay. Is this empty? Okay, this is from a previous class, so it's not empty. Let me just move this out. All right. So um, I'm going to create a file now for my styles, and my CSS, All right? And then I would link that in here. Awesome. All right, so I'll get into styling. Okay, so um, when styling, um, your web page, okay, there's usually this um, CSS rule set that comes at the top of your styling sheets. It looks something like this. Uh, this um, star, should I call it a star now? Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much it. Um, it's the sign that you get when you do a shift and your letter number eight key on your keyboard. It's a universal selector. It selects everything, okay? It selects everything. And then you usually come here and say padding zero, margin zero, and uh, what's the last one? Border box box sizing, I believe. So while you are setting um, padding and margin to zero is, by the time you um, by the time you start writing uh, your, when you're writing your HTML code, right? Some of the tags that you have there come with their own um, margins and paddings already, okay? Like your body tag in itself has um, some, Merging and padding that comes with it. Let's 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 um, let's practice something, just so I can show us that. If I come here and I say background color red, let me take this out for a bit. Let me just comment this out. Uh, we're familiar with using live server, right? Most of us are familiar. If you're not, uh, we'll probably have to do that some other time. Okay, so where's that? All right, this page. Okay, so usually um, some on some web pages and on some browsers, your body ta um, your body usually has like some margin around the edges. Right, it doesn't happen. I don't think it happens for every um, device or on every browser, but it does happen. So the moment you set a value like this at the top of your style sheets, it takes that out by default. Like it just takes that out. So if you if you if your device or your browser has that issue with the margin on the edges, it takes it out. Okay, now you see that everything just got adjusted. Let me do that again. If I comment this out and I save and I come here, right? There's spacing, everything has some spacing and padding and everything. But once I add this back, it takes it out for everything. And then you can then add um, your, what you intend you know, your specific margins and paddings for each one, you can then add them by yourself, all right, by default. Uh, 
But I, I was I was mentioning that um, usually the body tag comes with some margin on the edges on some devices and browsers. This also helps you to take it out. Okay, and then there's this other one called. Um, let me try to remember exactly what it is. Okay, this is it here. Box sizing, border box. Uh, let me do that again. All right, it says the specified width and height and respective mean and max properties on these elements determine the border box of the element. Okay. All right, so your um, style sheet should usually start with this so that you don't have excess padding or margin that you don't need or are not using. You are able to specify everything by yourself. And then I can take this out. Okay. All right, so at this point, we can start styling. Um, So the first thing I would do would be to center everything, right? And I can just do that by saying uh, to my body, I'll just add text align center. That's crossed. <laughs> okay, so everything goes into the center, right? Because I'm implementing this and everything is centered, so I'll just do that. Okay, and then I can um, pick up section by section. So I move to the first section. Uh, before I continue, I'd just like to say that because of our time, we may not be able to finish up on this particular live call. But wherever we stop at, I would ensure that um, a recording is done for the full um, implementation of the site. And that will be shared on Slack. OK, because I want to be sure that um, there are no questions that we missed. OK. I believe somebody was asking a question about um, the border box and what it actually implies. Okay, I didn't. I I missed that. Okay, so um, let me check that. Okay, so um, there's something called um the box model in CSS, right? Um, I think I mentioned that in one of the videos that we had. What's that? OK, so what, what the box model um, just simply means is that everything in your HTML is considered to be a box, right? What do I mean? Let me just pick one of these element here, give it a class, and let's, um, okay, let's pick this section, class box, okay? Uh, I mentioned in an, or I think I need to mention, because I've seen the issue arise a couple of times, in your class names, there should be no period in your class names, there should be no dots when you're writing class names in your HTML. Because when your CSS sees something like, when your CSS sees a dot, right? It assumes that you're trying to call a class. You're using a class selector. So if you, if you did um, name your class something like body tag, All your CSS is seeing is two different classes, one class body, one class tag. Okay, so you should never use a period when you're naming your classes 
in your HTML. All right, that's on their side. So if I take the box, let's add um, a background color to it. I'm doing this just so we can um, see what box sizing does in, we can see it live. Okay, let's say, oh, what color? Okay, let's use blue violet. <clears throat> okay, all right. So you see that this is, it's a box. It has top, it has bottom, it has left, and it has right. Okay, uh, let's add a width to it. Let's say 100 pixels and the height 100 pixels. Okay, that's really small. <laughs> Let's increase it by a lot. Uh, Let's see how much bigger it is. Awesome. Okay, so this is it, right? Um, let's give it a border five pixels solid red. Okay, now let's try to inspect this. Uh, I'm getting somewhere. Okay, so this is the first section, right? This is the section that we, yeah, this is the section that we added all of that styling to. Okay, so we're going to inspect something at the bottom here. Here. All right, so this is a representation of the, um, it's a box representation of our elements. Now, if you remember when I was adding um, a height and a width to it, I gave it a, a width of a thousand pixels and a height of 500 pixels. But if you look right here, let me see if I can zoom in on that a bit. Awesome. Okay, let me know if it's clear enough, or if I need to zoom in some more. Okay, so what it has here is this first value is for width, this first, um, second value is for height, right? Even though I gave it a width of a thousand pixels, what I have here is 990. Okay, I have 990 there. Uh, that's 10 pixels less than what I gave it. And same thing here that's 490, 10 pixels less. And if you notice here, the, the difference between the value I gave and the value that is here is in the borders. So if you, if, you, if you take the border to the left and the border to the right, and you add the values there, and then you add it to the width, we arrive back at 1,000 pixels. If you do the same thing for the vertical dimensions, we arrive back at 500 pixels. Okay, now let me come here and take, okay, just this one. Let me take this out and save. You see that this has changed, right? So what box sizing simply does is, it says that any padding or border or margin value that you add to your elements, it's going to take it out of the width and the height um, value. Okay, so if uh, when the let, let's come back here and return it. If what I had here was fifty pixels, right? It's just going to deduct 
that value. So what that does is that the height of this doesn't change, the width does not change, because instead of growing outwards or growing downwards, it's the inner, it's the inner dimensions that will keep reducing, because it's just going to take out of what it has, okay? But if I take this out, I want us to take note of the heights when I take this out. You see that it, it extends outwards, right? So when you don't have that um, value set for box sizing to be border box, when you don't have that set, it adds padding, border, and merging to your element. It adds it outside. But once you have it set, instead of adding it outside um, to the outside of the dimensions, it takes from what it has inside. I don't know if that's clear. I hope it's not confusing. Please, if it is confusing, let me know so I can try to um, explain it again. Okay. So once you have um, that value set for box sizing, border box, it's, it picks the value that you set, makes it like a constant um, width and height. And then every other thing that is going to add um, the padding, the border, and the margin is going to subtract the values from the width and the height of the element. If you don't have it set, it's not going to subtract. It's just going to add. So your elements will sort of grow bigger, so to say. Question. Does that make sense? Yes, please. Yeah. go ahead. I think... Uh... I'm, I'm trying to understand. I think what you're saying is that when the uh, border margin or padding is, is, has a certain amount of pixels, it gets taken away from the overall size of the box. Yes. Yes, and, exactly. And so does that mean that all of the content within the box uh, adjusts itself or is that something that has to be adjusted no, it code. adjusts itself. It adjusts itself. If you notice here, um, when I added this and I saved, um, taking note of the width and the height that I, that I had set for um, the elements, the content inside, right? It's so. If if what you mean by adjust is maybe maybe I should understand what you mean by adjusts. Um, I guess, so I don't get you wrong when I'm explaining. Yeah. Adjust, so, when you say it adjusts itself. I guess I kind of like just making sure everything is uh, centered and or aligned inside of the box how you want it. So that's kind of why I had a question. About, uh, so like just so um, any other um, at any other property, right, that you want, you want it to be centered, you want it to be aligned, you have to add it. This is centered because I added this value here. If I take it out, everything is going to be aligned to the left, irrespective of if I have box sizing set or not. Okay? Yes, it'll be defaulted. Yes. So this has nothing to do with um, the box size. The box, the box size is just about the width and the height available to the contents inside of the element. Okay, so all, but all the elements will stay within that box. They will stay within the box. So, okay. with the value set now, the more um, the more I increase the padding and the margin and the borders of this element, the more this inner bit is going to shrink. It's going to reduce because it's taking out of the values. Um, it's taking out of the width and the height values to be able to. Um, set values for the padding or the margin or the borders. Do you get what I mean? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Okay. So any other styling you want to have, you're going to have to set it by yourself. Okay. So I can take this out of here. Uh, any other questions? Wow, it's been like an hour, 13 minutes already. This class was supposed to be for 90 minutes and we seem to have exhausted that time. Uh, Sina, what do you mean when you say what will happen with the text? I'm not sure I understand. Let me know what you mean so I could try to explain that. 